On 1st of May 2018, Jeff Bezos, the richest man on earth, received a friendly video message from a number belonging to his friend, Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Jeff played the video and everything seemed fine, but soon afterwards, he found his phone heating up. Even though he was not using any apps, he soon observed that his phone was consuming large amounts of data. It was only at this time he realized that his phone was hacked. Jeff quickly sent his phone to digital forensic analysis, but by then, the entire contents of his phone, the call records, text messages, WhatsApp chats, location history, pictures and videos stored in his galleries, etc., were all copied and sent to an unknown hacker. How did this happen? Let's find out. Saudi Arabia is not known as a forerunner of any technology of any sorts. But how did the Saudis pull up such a high-tech hack? Amnesty International, the human rights watchdog, observed such sophisticated phone hacks were reported by journalists in other countries as well. After a deep technical analysis, they published a shocking report. They revealed that the whole saga of phone hacking was caused by a single spyware called Pegasus. This mobile spyware was developed and sold commercially by an Israeli company called the NSO Group. This company explicitly developed the software for the defense of Israel but later sold it to the governments around the world. NSO makes no secret of its product and its intention to sell it. It has its own website and a dedicated marketing team to sell the spyware to countries around the world. It is sold to the government with the sole purpose of fighting terrorism and crime. No private entity can buy this deadly spyware. According to New York Times, the NSO charges $500,000 as an initial setup cost. $650,000 for installing it in 10 Apple devices, the same cost for 10 Android phones. For 10 BlackBerry phones, it charges $500,000 and $300,000 for Symbian phones. Even though NSO is a private company, Israeli government considers Pegasus to be a weapon. Hence, its approval is required for selling it to any country. To install the malicious code, the hacker would send an SMS or a WhatsApp link to the target's phone. On clicking the link, the spyware would be installed and the victim's phone is now fully compromised. This technique of sending links was used during the early days of the spyware. But now, the NSO has come up with a zero-click version, meaning the victim need not click any link. Only a missed WhatsApp call to the victim's phone was enough to install the spyware. Pegasus was discovered accidentally in 2016 when Arab human rights defender Ahmed Mansour received a text message in his iPhone promising secrets about torture happening in prisons in the United Arab Emirates by following the link. Mansour grew suspicious and sent the link to Citizen Lab, a forensic digital research lab set up by Amnesty International. The lab found out that if Mansour had clicked the link, it would have jailbroken his iPhone and implanted the spyware in his phone. Citizen Lab linked the attack to the NSO group. Even though the spyware was developed and sold only for the purpose of fighting terrorism and crime, countries which bought the spyware began to misuse it by tracking journalists, activists and opposition leaders. But those governments assumed that they would never be discovered or tracked. They were wrong. Investigative journalists with the support of digital forensic experts from the Citizen Lab were able to figure out not only the countries which were using Pegasus, but even the phone numbers they were tracking. In 2020, a target wish list of 50,000 phone numbers was leaked to a Paris-based NGO, Forbidden Stories. Of the identified phone numbers, most of the phone numbers predominantly belong to journalists and activists. 300 of that phone numbers belong to Indians. Even the phone number of the current French president, Emmanuel Macron, was there. He changed his phone after he got his information. The country is using Pegasus software is vast. The NSO made such good business out of selling Pegasus that in 2014, the American private equity firm Francisco Partners bought the company for 130 million US dollars and later put it up for sale in 2015 for a staggering 1 billion US dollars, almost 10 times the purchase price. Also in June 2018, 
an Israeli court indicted a former employee of Enso Group for allegedly stealing a copy of Pegasus and attempting to sell it online for 50 million worth of cryptocurrency. This spyware showed enormous business potential. After Pegasus was discovered, the Enso claimed that they were not responsible for any misuse of the spyware. It claimed that the respective governments were responsible for its use and misuse. But this was later exposed to be a big lie. The target for spying is identified by the respective governments. The government hackers expertise lies in sending the malicious link and enticing the victim to click on the link. When the victim clicks the link, the spyware is downloaded from the NSO servers located around the world. Then the NSO ecosystems take over. And the complete operation of spying on the victim is done using the NSO servers and the information harvested is collected by the respective government agents. But Apple mobile phones are considered very secure, right? Then how did Pegasus break into Apple so easily and for so long? Citizen Lab estimates the kernel mapping table in the spyware's code has values all the way back to iOS 7, released in 2013. The thing that Apple's mobile phone are super secure is something of a myth. All mobile operating systems are continuously upgraded, and with upgradation comes flaws and loopholes which the hackers exploit. How was the Apple phones hacked with zero click? Meaning the target did not click any malicious link or anything. The phone was just magically taken over by Pegasus. Well, the entry point is the iMessage inbox of the iPhone. A GIF message is sent to the iMessage inbox. iPhone would then automatically download the codec attached with the GIF image without scanning for any viruses or file extensions. The NSO would then send 20 more GIFs to the victim's phone. thereby downloading over hundreds of thousands of lines of code of the spyware all this happens even before the gif is seen by the victim this is so advanced that apple came to know about this exploit only when citizen lab informed them apple fixed the exploit in the ios 14.8 version released in september 2021 today any gif message sent to imessage is processed in a separate location called blastdo Blastdo's role is to unpack and process incoming messages inside a secure and isolated environment where any malicious code hidden inside a message is easily detected. As for WhatsApp, things were way simpler. Pegasus is said to have used a vulnerability in WhatsApp's VoIP stack that is used to place video and audio calls. A missed call on WhatsApp allowed Pegasus to gain root access on target's device. WhatsApp on later investigation found that 1400 users in 20 countries were infected with Pegasus. It alerted those users about the attack. Apple and WhatsApp later sued NSO and its parent company, Q Cyber Technologies, for these illegal attacks and had the US government blacklisted. Governments around the world who had one time rejoiced at the success of Pegasus had to do a big cover up. It is illegal to hack anybody's phone without a court order. It violates a person's right to privacy. After this incident, governments which used Pegasus became liable to lawsuits filed by journalists and activists whose phones the government targeted. The saga of Pegasus is very very intriguing. On one side, the sophistication and dexterity of Pegasus spyware is admired, and on the other side, how it was completely exposed even to the details of the phone numbers that the governments are tracking is even more exciting. New technologies like Pegasus are double-edged swords that can comfort and at the same time bring great misery. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.